Welcome back for our weekly talk with the Pacific Coast Business Times. Jorge Mercado joins us live to talk about how the local cannabis industry is positioning itself to sell cannabis they grow here across the country. And Jorge, it's awfully good to see you. Thanks for taking time again. A recent move by the no, federal by the federal government, has local cannabis growers excited about expanding outside state lines? Tell us more about that. Yeah, I mean, so last uh, Thursday, President Biden um, announced, you know, a series of things to sort of decriminalize cannabis. Um, and it was kind of a bit of a shock. You know, it's, it's he's talked about taking those steps in the past, but nothing really was being done. Um, but it's definitely a welcome to surprise, a, a welcome surprise for a lot of uh, cannabis people in the industry. Um, you know, potentially the biggest thing that he talked about was cannabis being delisted or relisted from being a Schedule One drug. So he called on the Department of Human and Health Services to initiate the process of reviewing how marijuana is scheduled under federal law. You know, other Schedule One drugs include like heroin and much more harmful things, um, and those are regulated, you know, to the absolute max. So if cannabis can move to a less restrictive schedule, it could be federally legalized. You know, for example, testosterone is a Schedule Three drug, Xanax is a Schedule Four drug, and these are things that help people. Um, a lot of people, millions of Americans. So certainly it could be that route. Um, if it's delisted entirely, it could be federally regula regulated the way alcohol is. Um, that's not currently scheduled as a controlled substance, but it's heavily regulated by both federal and state levels. Um, we talked to a local lawyer here, Amy Steinfeld, and she said that she expects the process to take about six months. Um, but, you know, the federal government could use previous studies done by the state of California, for example, which has already legalized cannabis. Uh, to really quicken that process, but that's certainly one of the most interesting things. So we're not there yet federally, right? The president just says those who have had convictions for marijuana, those are, are wiped out now. We know voters here in California made marijuana legal at the ballot box a few years ago, just as a number of other states have done. Would it take an act of Congress, Jorge, to decriminalize marijuana nationwide? Yeah, I mean, it, it'll definitely, we'll have to see how it plays out in terms of how it's relisted or rescheduled. Um, or if it's delisted entirely, um, but that's certainly it could it might not take an act of Congress. It could possibly just be that with the descheduling, it can certainly become federally legal in that way. Okay. Santa Barbara County Supervisor Doss Williams told you that legalization of marijuana could help knock out the black market. That certainly has not been the case in California. So why does he say it would work on a national level and how would it work? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that it would help is um, it would allow, you know, one of the biggest problems that California has is that there's a lot of growth here. We, we grow a lot of cannabis, but we don't necessarily have a lot of the, the retail to really sell all that cannabis. And then you have a lot of people that are unsure if they're even walking into a legal place. If cannabis is federally legalized, I feel like a lot of those rules change. First of all, a lot of the cannabis that's grown here in California can now be sold to other states. So it would encourage our growers to grow as much as they can and then get rid of it. Um, and I think there would just be a lot more precedence for if you're running an illegal storefront, there would probably be way more enforcement. Um, from the federal level. And you talked to some local growers here in Santa Barbara County that say that they have more room to grow more cannabis if they have more customers across the country because right now it's limited just to California, correct? Yeah, no, I, I, that's definitely one of the biggest things. Uh, I think one of the bigger ones is Glass House Brands. You know, they're a cannabis company that actually went public uh, in Canada last year. Um, and they pur purchased Howling's Tomatoes in Ventura County last year for about $100 million with the goal of repurposing that facility for cannabis growth. Now, they currently only use about one-sixth of that facility to grow cannabis because, well, they can serve the California market with just that. If it opens federally, they, you know, president of the company, Grand Ferrara, already told us that they would change that and they would grow only cannabis because now they can supply up to 345 million Americans. It's certainly a huge difference. Um, and it has millions of dollars of impact for growers, retailers, and um, even states, I mean, in terms of taxes and everything like that. I was going to say, then you delve into the taxes. That's a whole other big can of yeah. worms as well. It's a much bigger market out yeah. there yeah. if the nation opens up mm -hmm. and the tax dollars, but then you have enforcement. A lot of things that we'll continue to cover, as will Jorge. We will put a link to his article uh, on our website as well. Jorge Mercado from the Pacific Coast Business Times. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, guys.